What's the first language that comes to mind when somebody says automate your workflow? Probably Python. But today, we're going to take the champion, Python, and see if we have a contender in .NET. Being the sole developer on a large project, sometimes I still get tasked with tedious jobs. And unfortunately, one of the ones that I have to do a lot is adding new users. And not that long ago, I got a request to add about 100 new users. And I said, I'm not going to sit here and one at a time add these users. And my first thought was, I'll just write a Python script to automate that process. And that got me thinking once I was done, I've been doing .NET for 16 years or so, and I've seen it come a long way. Could .NET do the job as well, maybe better than Python? Will Python remain the champion, or will .NET smote his ruin upon, upon the, the mountainside? mountainside? I put in time codes, so if you want to skip to the Python code, or if you want to skip to the .NET code, or if you want to skip straight to the conclusion. Either way, let's see what we got. All right, we'll start with a fresh file. Open up, dot, open up uh, Visual Studio Code. Let's move this over where we can see it. Now, we need to import a few modules. We're going to import requests, which I have already installed on the machine. And we're going to also import JSON to handle our response. Uh, one thing I've already done is I've already formatted the array for both uh, Python and .NET. It takes about the same amount of time to format the array for each, but you don't want to sit here and watch me format arrays. So we're going to create our for loop set our URL. Of course, for efficiency, I could probably put this URL outside the for loop, but this is just a one and done uh, test. Set our parameters, which is going to be a JSON object that we're going to send. The JSON or the request takes a location ID. It takes an admin boolean, which in this case, these are test accounts that were creating for our uh, test location. So we'll set it to false. Grab our first name from the array. And that is yeah, the first column. Get our last name from the array, which is our second column. And get our email address, which is the third column in our array. Okay, that looks good. Now, we're going to go ahead and uh, just print these. We're going to loop through it once, just print them, make sure our formatting looks right. Let's take a look here. And that looks good. I think that'll work. All right, now we need to set our headers. Uh, one thing I've also done is if, if I wanted to make this more long-term use, I could set it to um, accept login credentials and login to get the JOT header. But in this case, I've simply logged in ahead of time, grabbed the header, um, grabbed the JOT header, and we're just going to copy and paste it in. Uh, this header expires after 40 minutes, which will be long expired before this video goes out. So our data, which we're going to get back, we're going to call request.post. We will pass it our URL. We will pass it our parameters. And we will pass it our header values. Okay. Then, uh, just to make sure we had a success, we're going to dump the JSON that we got back, um, just the data from the JSON. And something, what am I missing? Oh, we need um, open parentheses before our JSON. Let's set that. Okay, I think everything looks good. Yeah. Now we're going to clear our console. 
And let's go ahead and run our file and see what we get. All right. And everything looks good. And in just about four minutes, we have created our file and we've created our 10 test users. So say that's pretty good. Let's try out the .NET. All right, so we're gonna start once again fresh. We're gonna call .NET new console, which will create a new console application for us. So because uh, .NET is a compiled language, we're not just writing a single script. Now, there's not really much to this. We're gonna have our one program.cs file. Uh, we'll go ahead and import our libraries. There's a couple more we're going to use. Uh, because .NET is a strongly typed language, we have to be more precise in what we tell it. So we're going to use text for encoding. We're going to use JSON for reading and serializing. We're going to use system.NET for our um, API call. And once again, I've uh, auto already formatted my array of IDs um, and again you see in our array here once again with Python we can just create an array uh, but with .NET we need to tell it what type of data we're passing into the array. Uh, there are times when you can just tell it generic objects but in this case we're going to have an array of strings we're going to call or we're going to create a new instance of our HTTP client and that way we create it once we'll use it as we uh, loop through so we don't have to recreate it every time we will add our headers because once again strongly typed we're going to tell it hey I am sending uh, JSON data to the server so let's now create a loop. Um, I know in Python I created a for loop here. I'm creating a for each loop. It just happened to be what I typed. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to create a generic object to hold our data. Um, so that's one of the nice things we can do here. If this was uh, an application that was going to be used more, I'd probably actually create an object that would hold this stuff. But for now, it's just a one-off. So we're going to use a generic object. We have our first name, last name, email, just like we did before. Um, I, I passed in the admin value by default before, but we don't actually have to pass it. It'll default to false. Um, I hadn't thought about it at the time. And then we're going to take our object and we're going to serialize it to a string formatted for JSON. Now we need to add in our authorization header once again. And once again, I uh, just copied and pasted this rather than create more code that would go and get it again if, if I was going to use this a lot I might have it to an accept a, a username and password and pull this down automatically but we're just gonna copy it in just like we did before okay now we have our headers set we have our data set so Let's go ahead and uh, we don't want client. This is our response from our client call. So we're going to call our client object. We will send the request as a post. We will add in our URL. I could have created the URL beforehand and passed it in similar to what we did on Python. E either way, it's going to take it no matter how we do it. We are going to pass in our uh, request body. And again, here it's, it is strongly typed, so it's looking for string content. So we're going to pass it our formatted string. We're going to tell it the encoding for it. And we're going to tell it what type of data that we're sending. And because this is an async call, we're going to call result at the end of it, which will cause it to wait for that result and we will write our result that we get, our response. The response itself is going to contain the entire thing. We're just concerned with the content. We will read it async and we'll call result again to wait for the async to finish. Now, is that everything we need here? 
let's go ahead and call .NET run, which will compile it and run it. And we'll see it process our 10 results again. And here, a little bit longer, a little bit under five minutes, and we got basically the same results with .NET as we did with Python. So what do we learn from our comparison? Uh, let's start with Python. Python in all of that was just a single file. It was just a single, uh, single file of code, the, whereas the .NET was a whole project. So there were other files, even though we kept our code to one file, uh, there's, there's other pieces to it. So Python, just by virtue of being a single file, is going to be smaller and uh, less to work with. Because Python is not a strongly typed language, we actually wrote our file 20% faster than we did our .NET file. Um, now, over a large project, you're probably not going to see that 20% hold, but certainly you do gain some time by writing it in Python because it's not strongly typed. To make an array in Python, we just say, you know, IDs equals bracket values. Whereas in uh, .NET, we have to tell it, hey, this is an array of strings and it contains an array of, uh, it, this is an array which contains an array of strings. So just by virtue of being strongly typed, .NET is gonna be longer. Now, on the plus side of .NET, it was just as simple to get started from the command line as in using .NET as it was with Python. So there were no extra commands that we had to write. I didn't have to open up Visual Studio like I used to have to. File, new project, here's the type of project, take a few minutes to run. No, it was just, two, it was just one command to create our project and open Visual Studio code. So immensely, immensely easier than what it used to be. The other thing is, if you noticed, it took a second or less to compile the code for .NET, but when it actually ran, um, and I'm just eyeballing it, but it, I would say it ran about three times as fast as our Python code did. Because Python has to be interpreted on the fly and .NET is compiled into a single executable, the actual runtime of the application is gonna be faster with .NET. Um, and o over a large project, that could also have some benefit. So speed of coding goes to Python, speed of runtime definitely goes to .NET. Now when this problem first came to me, I've been a .NET coder for a long time, but to solve this problem, I did write a Python script. So in this case, yeah, I chose Python. And if this same problem, even after writing it in .NET, if this same problem came to me tomorrow, I would probably write another Python script. But there have been other problems that I ran into where I had to access the database and do some data manipulation. And in those instances, I did write a small console application uh, because of the utility of um, Entity Framework for accessing data and link for data manipulation. Uh, it was actually faster for me to write a .NET console application. So I don't think in the end that there's one silver bullet to say, hey, Python's always better, .NET's always better. Um, to write up a simple script like this where I had to create some users, yeah, I'll probably just write a Python script again. Um, but what I wanna do is, is take some of these things that are routinely seen as best done in Python and start doing some more comparisons with .NET um, Python's been around a long time, decades, and there's a lot of frameworks for it. But .NET has actually been around about 20 years now, and a lot, a lot of work has been done in it and to it. So it also has a lot of frameworks. So I, I hope you come back. I'm going to try to do a couple of these comparisons to see what's best in, in given situations. Um, now. You hear a lot about the algorithm, so I really want you to smash the like button. Not, not, you know, not just click on it, but really aggressively punch your screen. It helps for the algorithm. And if you like this, uh, subscribe if you want or don't. Either way, I hope you come back for the next video. Uh, let me know if there's something you want me to do a comparison on. And thanks for watching.